Dean A District Court for Congress of the State of Michigan is now back in session. You may be seated. Okay. Uh, is this going to be like Groundhog Day? Where? <laughs> Don't yeah, you know, never did like that groundhog. Did you see Miss Woodson, sir? Um, back in my day, I don't know if I'd come back either. Um, Can you, can, yeah, can you check and see, Ms. Mr. Allen? I saw her parked. Saw her parked? Was she in the, oh, so it was at our parking lot. Okay, good, good. Don't bring him out until she's there. Until she's sitting. Or at least in the room. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now we can. Does call the case of the people of the state of Michigan versus Isaiah Williams. Council, state your appearance, just please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Danny and Woodson on behalf of Mr. Williams, who is seated at the fence table to my right. All right, very good. Um, before we call the next witness, um, during what I'll call Mr. Williams' episode with the paper bag, Exhibit 9, there was no response. I think I heard the prosecutor ask. To have it admitted, did not hear a response from you because of what was going on. For exam purposes only, Your Honor, no objection. So, for the record, Exhibit 9 is admitted. Thank you, Judge. That was the first. Yes. All right. You may call your next witness. People call Mary Leslie Bryant. All right. And you see, raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony of God. Give me the truth. I hope you got it. Go ahead and have a seat. State your first and last name and spell it for the record. Uh, Mary Leslie Bryant, M A R Y L E S L I E. I think you know what A U T. All right. You may be seated, ma'am. Thank you. Um, before you inquire, Ms. Bryant, are you from Ann Arbor? 
Are you from Ann Arbor? No. Okay. All right. Then it's not who I'm thinking it is. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ma'am, may I call you Mary? Yes. Okay. Mary, do you know someone by the name of Isaiah Williams? How do you know Isaiah Williams? Someone. Okay. He was someone you dated, your boyfriend? Yes, someone I dated. Okay. Do you see Mr. Williams in the courtroom? The your Honor, let the record reflect that Miss Leslie Bryant has identified the defendant, Isaiah Williams. Without objection, record shall so reflect. Um, Mary, Miss Leslie Bryant, have you been interviewed about this case a couple different times by the Ann Arbor Police Department? Yes. Okay. Um, does 2011 and 2017 sound about right to you as to when you were interviewed? Okay. Um, I'm going to bring you back to the fall of 1994. Tell us how you met the defendant, Isaiah Williams. In a temporary place that a lot of people going to work. I'm in mean, down there. And were you co workers at that time? We didn't become co workers because whoever gets there first gets the job. Okay. But then after that, I'll go to the same day. <laughs> Well, job site. So we all, a group of us to stay together. At some point, do you begin dating Mr. Williams? Yeah. Okay. Tell me about how the relationship starts off. Is it good? It was good. He um, told me that he was a paralegal. Told me that he was um, looking for a full-time job. And after that, we went out a couple of times, and it was it was all right. At some point, did it change? It changed after I went to my daughter Daniel's house because she had a barbecue, and he accused me of my oldest son, but she didn't believe that was my son. He he got very angry, upset, and said, "Let's go." He, Took me about a woman and said, that's it. So we didn't. And did it escalate from there in the relationship? Did things get worse? Oh, beat the hell out of me, get worse. Yeah, I got worse. I, th I think I would, Miss Leslie Bryant. Okay. So can you tell me about what beating the hell out of you looked like? Can you tell us what that means? One time he took an Pull my hair out of my hand. I took my clothes and dragged me down the steps and left me in the hallway. And then he just came down the steps, took me by the arm and dragged me right back up there and just started beating me again. How many times do you think this happened? Did he ever give you any any pills or anything like that? He gave me drinks and it made me feel like I couldn't move and I couldn't say anything, but he did what he wanted to me. What does that mean? Beat me on the bed, stripped me, put his hand and stuff inside me. He just did his thing. Could you, after taking this drink that he gave you, could you could you stop him? No. You, so you already said you couldn't move, correct? Is that a, is that yes? Yeah. Okay. During one particular uh, physical assault, um, do you recall him strangling you? Yeah. Do you recall him telling you some statements that bring you here to court? Yeah. Tell us about what you remember Isaiah Williams telling you while he was strangling you. He got mad about something and he started choking me. And it was like I was going in and out. 
And you said, don't you know I killed a woman? Don't you know I killed a baby? I'll kill you. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. He just kept on telling me. Oh, I woke up. He was just sitting in his chair over here. And he acted just like nothing happened. These statements that he made to you about, I killed a woman, I killed a baby. Did he make that to you one time during an assault or did he ever say that to you again during an assault? Okay. Um, did he specifically say he killed a baby? Did he say what he did with the baby's body? Uh, he, he was, I'll, I'll beat you up, I'll kill you. As a way of keeping me from getting out of there. I did not want him to hurt my grandkids. I did not want him to hurt my other, my, my children. So I stayed away. You said he, he threatened to kill you after he made these statements, correct? Um, based on those threats, did you initially tell anybody about these statements he made? When the police came to you, did you tell them? No. Okay. And eventually, did you tell them? Yeah. Okay. They came to talk to you? Were you worried about talking to the police? No, because I thought after all this time, he had gone about his business just like he didn't do anything. The police didn't go to and hear him and get him. They wouldn't have come to Cincinnati and get him. It was like they were just letting him do what he wanted to do. And it went on for so long. I just said, well, forget it. And I wasn't doing anything. But let it go. At the time he made these statements to you about, I, I killed the baby, um, did you know he had a baby that disappeared? I didn't even know. That he had children at the almost the end of our relationship. Okay. Because it was Easter time and I got baskets for all my grandkids. And he was upset because I got them something. And I didn't get his grandkids nothing. And I got something for grandkids. So at the time he made these statements about this baby, did it even register that he had a baby for you to be even really concerned about? No. Okay. I didn't believe him. I thought it was in just another way to make sure that I stay crazy in my life. That's how I feel about it. That you were feeling crazy about the situation. Okay. You mentioned Easter time. <laughs> the statements that he made while he was assaulting you, uh, did it happen around Easter time? Okay. About how much time passed before he was assaulting you again and making these statements about the baby? Pretty much. How long did you and Mr. Williams date? Until the final time he took it on. He, he was beating me. And I, because I wouldn't cry, he had this remote control and he was beating me on my right foot. And I would I just said, let him go and do it. And then he started hitting and started really hurting. So then he tried to pull me, and I got to the bottom of the bed to try to get him off of me. But then it, he just drug me across the He threw the bedroom and right there. Then he just got up and went in there and just sat there looking at me. I went out, got ready to get up. This scar right here was on my head. That's as far as on my face. And that was it. Was that the final, the final straw? You said that was it. Was that the last assault that you recall? Yeah. Mary, was that approximately September? Excuse me. I'm going to show you some pictures. Was that approximately May of 1997, if you remember? Approximately. Did you go to the hospital for your injuries? Yes. Okay. Um, did you actually file a police report? Yes. Did you have to go to court for this? Yes. 
Did you also get a personal protection order against Mr. Williams at that time? Okay. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Mary, I'm going to first show you people's exhibit 60 through 67. Can you tell me if you recognize those pictures? Who's that in exhibit 60? Okay, is that a picture? Of, do you have any injuries in that picture? Scar in the middle of your forehead and in your nose? People's Exhibit 61, is that a, a bruise on your arm? People's Exhibit 62, what's that? Is that from the assault that you're, you've been talking about with Isaiah? Yeah. And from the hospital visit that we've been talking about? People 64, what is that? Is that from the same assault we're talking about? Here it looks like in people 64, 65, 66. Looks like the, the back of these Polaroid photos of your injuries. Is that the hospital information? Okay. Is that where these pictures were taken of you of these injuries that we're talking about today? And people 67. That looks like a card for a medical appointment. Do you remember what that was for? I was supposed to go back in. Because he had sodomized me so much. And I wasn't having a meeting. I was supposed to make an appointment to go here. And I said I wasn't going out there. Because they couldn't make him, they couldn't find him. They couldn't get with him. So I just stayed home. I went to the clinic and talked to these people up there. But I've been at. So you said because you were afraid to go out and see him, you actually missed follow-up appointment for being sodomized by him, correct? Did this happen during this final assault that we're talking about? No, because that was waiting. Okay. People 69, are these Franciscan Health System of Cincinnati? Do you know where, where that was at? The Western Hills Hospital. Okay. Is that the hospital you went to for your medical treatment that we've been talking about for these injuries? Yeah. Okay. And they've got your, your name and your information in them. Mary, you indicated that you've got a personal protection order after this assault against Mr. Williams. Giving you what's been marked, people 68, five pages. Do these documents look familiar to you? Did you have to fill these out? Yes. Is that the paperwork you had to fill out to get your personal protection order? Was that granted, Mary? Did you actually get the order from the court? Okay. Eventually, you did get a personal protection order against it, correct? Yeah. Was that in the city of Cincinnati in Ohio? Yeah, it was the last time I was supposed to go to court. And we got sit in here and they caught everybody that came. And I was supposed to sit in here. And when he came to sit, he didn't bother to come to court. So that's when they told me. Go back to the shelter and stay in there. And I didn't let me know when they catch you. They never did catch you. They never caught him. No. You had a personal protection order on you for about 20 years, is that right? Okay. Your Honor, I'm going to ask that people 60 through 69 be admitted. Any objection or water? No objection for exam purposes only, Your Honor. Exhibit 60 through 69 are admitted. Mary, you said that when the police came to you first, I think you told them Isaiah made a statement to you about killing a woman, but you didn't mention the baby part. Do you remember that? Was there some concern with why you didn't mention it was a baby until the second time they came and saw you? Do you remember why you felt more comfortable the second time? And I'm out here. I was not going to let him hurt my grandkids. Okay. If you're ready, do what you want to do, but you're not going to hurt my grandbaby. And that, that was all it was. Tell me about that. You said he made these statements, your grandbabies, your grandbabies. What would he tell you he was going to do to your grandbabies? Sometimes he'd be choking. It's like, 
going to another little world and all of his own. Excuse me, I was looking for the FBI one time. And I kept telling him I did. And he said, you want me, you want me to hurt your grandma, you don't you, don't you? And he just kept talking to me. I said, no, I don't work for the FBI. I never worked for the FBI. And it didn't matter. So I just waited until he got to with his little stuff. And I was like, I didn't even want to do it. It wasn't a time. It wasn't anybody to help me. So I just had to bad my time and help myself. That's what I did. These statements that you say that Isaiah made about killing a baby um, and killing a woman, um, other than the police, did you tell anybody else about these statements that Isaiah had made to you? No. Because you know how you would know. When somebody tells you over and over again, that this is what happened, and this is what happened. But then, remember, he's talking to you, so maybe he's just saying the scary words. You don't believe it. I didn't believe it until they came to show me a picture of a little baby. And at the time these statements were made, you didn't know there was a baby named Olisa Williams that had been missing, correct? Okay. Um, when was the last time you saw Isaiah Williams before you're you're seeing him here in court today? How long's it been? He showed up in court and then told him that he had to go down, go to jail. Uh, gave, gave me my next court appointed time in front of court. And he said he skipped, he didn't come. That was in 1997, correct? And has it been that long since you've had to see him since 1997? Yeah. Okay. Did Isaiah Williams ever tell you that he had a close head injury that caused him to have amnesia or have lack of memory in the years that you knew him? He said. And he had been in a quarrel And I looked at him. And Went to work, did everything normal. So I said, just don't say nothing. Just don't. Because if, if you tell him the truth, you tell him the truth. If he's not, he's not, that's not going to be another point for him to whip my ass. Excuse me. No, it's okay, man. You got a right to say what you want. So there's no reason, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, no reason for you to confront him and risk getting hurt. No. Okay. Um, did he ever say that after this car wreck, he didn't know who he was or didn't have any memory of anyone in his life? Did he ever tell you anything like that? No. Okay. One moment, Your Honor. Yes. No further questions. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Hold on just one moment. Cross-examination. One moment, Your Honor. You might want to remember your microphone. Um, yeah, it goes green if you're not being picked up, but go ahead. Good afternoon. Um, you said that when Mr. Williams made threats about killing people, it was during the course of time that he was beating you, correct? And he didn't make those threats or those statements outside of that, right? And that's why you thought he was just saying them to scare you, correct? And outside of his interaction with you, did you see him be violent or abusive towards any children, like your grandchildren or anything like that? I didn't see anything else that it was. I mostly, well, well, I was in the apartment. I could not go nowhere. I was right there in the apartment. So it's fair to say the only person you saw him be violent with was you, correct? And you said that he would repeatedly tell you that he had killed a woman and that he had also beaten another woman with a group of kids and left that woman for dead. 
or is a preacher's daughter? I'm sorry. So you said that he raped and sodomized you, correct? And he told you that he had raped and sodomized a young woman, correct? Okay. And he told you that he had killed another woman, correct? But he never killed you, correct? Okay. No further questions. Very briefly. Yes. Mary, did you ever leave your grandchildren alone with this man? Did he ever watch them or babysit them or... or have them in his care and custody? No, because I made sure. Before I went over there, Dion and the kids would be upstairs, and I would be outside the house. All the time I went over there, and he came over there, was when he pulled my hair out of my head, and that neck of me, and that was all the time. So he never was alone with those grandbabies, correct? Okay. And when you were asked about the statement that he made about gang raping a, a preacher's daughter, he had sexually assaulted you before. You said he sodomized you, correct? So you had no reason to doubt that particular story since he had treated you that way, correct? Okay. Thank you, Mary. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Bryant, thank you very much. You all right. Brian, you take your time. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Brian, you just take your time. I got I got all day. You take your time and get there, okay? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Call your next witness. People call Elizabeth Reese to the stand. I think she's coming in. All right. There you go. Hello, Miss Reese. Miss Reese, will it be easier for you either to be in the chair or you want to sit on your? I'll sit down. Yeah. You'll sit now. Okay. All right. Very good. Where you sit down? You raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth. So, you're going to be happy. Okay. have a seat. State your first and last name and spell it for the record. And then you got you, you got it. He's better than me, so we're good. Okay. Okay. You ain't quiet. Thank you, Josh. Miss Reese. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, the case that brings you here to court, is it fair to say you've been interviewed by Ann Arbor Police many times? Many, many times. Uh, if I tell you you were interviewed in 83, twice in 2011, once in 2014, and once in 2015, would you have any reason to dispute that? How do you know somebody by the name of Isaiah Williams? Okay. How long were you married to him? About 11 years. Okay. Do you have any children with Mr. Williams? I have three. Okay. What are their names? Verna Williams. Kimberly. And Scott. Does he go by Scotty? Scott. Do you see Mr. Williams in the courtroom today? Yes. Okay. Can you point him out, describe what he's wearing or what identifies him? He's over here. Um, 
Here the teacher and the mask. Your Honor, let the record reflect that Ms. Reese is identified to defend. That objection shall so reflect. Ms. Reese, is it fair to say that back in 1983, your memory was probably the freshest and the best that it was back then? Yes. Were you honest and truthful with the police back in 1983? Yes. Since 1983, have you had any injuries that have caused you to have significant memory loss? Yes, I've had two strokes. And uh, being dishonest. Yes. Okay. Um, were you also physically assaulted in 1984? Yes. Who physically assaulted you? I did. Okay. And in that assault, which we will talk about, did that cause you any sort of head injury or memory loss? Yes. Okay. Um, so as we go through the dates, I'm going to try to refresh your memory. If there's things you don't remember, just tell me you don't remember. Okay. Is it fair to say you were married from the defendant from 1966 to 1976 and divorced in 77? Yes. Okay. Tell me about your marriage, your relationship with Isaiah. Um, probably uh, the first year marriage probably was pretty good. Uh, the second year she started to physically assault me. We just go ahead. on a regular, regular, regular basis. When you say he physically assaulted you, can you tell us some of the things that he did to you? He did slap, knock, hit, whatever. Did he ever physically assault you when you were pregnant with any of your children? Yes. Okay. Which children? Kimberly's. When you say he assaulted you, what did he do to you when you were pregnant with Kimberly? Uh, he thrown me on or he, uh, he kicked me in my side. When you separated in 90, 1976, tell me how it finally causes you to, to go to separate. Um, well, off and on, he would stop me. And then in, in uh, 76, I decided that enough was just enough for me. And when you left, you moved away from him. Did he still continue to contact you? Yes. Okay. Did he ever continue to assault you times that you separated and were preparing to divorce? Yes. Can you tell me about a time you remember that, that happening? Um, I had left him and I remember one time I saw him get, and my mother came to and I went to her house, and I was saw him there at her house. And uh, he, uh, my, all my children were there at the time. Uh, and every, and my sister, my sister and my brothers were there too. They were afraid. And my mother finally, I'm not sure what year that was, but she came to the, to the door. And she told him, she said, well, if you come in now, you know, I'll do that. This axe, you put axe to the door. And so he knew, he said, I remember the words he said, he said, you, you're a crazy woman. And she she left. Any of these uh, physical assaults, separated persons, physical assault fights, were they ever over child support or him having to pay child support? I don't remember fight necessarily, but uh, I remember he did tell the judge that he wasn't going to pay child support. That he would pay, that the judge could not tell him what to pay the children, that he would pay what he wanted to. In 19, you've actually gotten a pretty good memory of your personal protection order on him um, since that 1984 assault, correct? Yes. Well, actually, we'll go back to um, Your daughter, Kimber, yes. um, back in the 1960s when she was about two, maybe three years old, did something happen to Kimberly? Yes. What happened to Kimberly? Uh, I was at work. I came home, and uh, Kimberly was acting a little strange, a little um, so I asked her what happened to him. And I you know, tried to find out in little child's words. 
and she really didn't couldn't tell me what happened. I asked her older sister what had happened. She she was a little older than her, so but she couldn't tell me either what had happened. Let but, me ask this: uh, at the time, Kimberly's home is your mm -hmm. older daughter Verna? Yes. Who was who was there with the children when something happened to Kimberly? Who was watching? The dad, Isaiah. Okay. All right. So when the kids don't tell you what happened, what happens next? Um, I then um, Kimberly was uh, just kind of really, really sore and to the touch almost. And so she uh, finally, uh, I called his mother and she came over uh, and we took her to the hospital. Did Kimberly have any injuries? She had, I believe, I know it was one broken leg, I think it was two, and a broken arm or two broken arms in the leg. I know it was one broken leg. With these broken bones, did you ask Isaiah what happened to Kimberly? Yes, I did. At that time, what did he tell you? He said that um, she had, um, she had fell into the bushes that were in our yard. Did CPS become involved? Yes, they did. Okay. Did, did Kimberly actually leave the home for a brief period of time? Yes, she did. For about how long? Probably two weeks or three the most. Was Kimberly in a cast? Yes, she was. At that time, do you remember if Isaiah was interviewed by, by CPS as to what happened? Yes, he was. Okay. Do you know what he told them? He told them the same thing that he had told me. The fast forward, um, maybe 1972 or 73, do you remember Mr. Williams sending you a letter asking you to come see him in, in prison? Yes, he was in prison on a uh, narcotics charge. And my mother and his mother were uh, asked to come to the prison to see him. Did all three of you go and, and see him? Yes, we did. You were still married to him at the time, correct? Right? Yes, okay. yes, I was. So when you came to see him, did, what if anything did he tell you? Uh, he said he wanted to talk to us. He, had, he he really just wanted to be honest. He had found he felt God, and so he really wanted to tell us what happened. And so he, he told me at that time <laughs> that he had assaulted uh, Kimberly and had thrown her down because she wouldn't stop crying. She would often cry with him all mostly all the time. She never connected, she never bonded with him. And she, he tried to get started from crying, she wouldn't stop, so he pushed her down. He threw her down, excellent. When you, you say he threw her down, did he indicate where, where in the house he had thrown her down? I don't remember where in the house, but on the outside of the house, it was the, uh, it was the back in, instead of the front. That, In the time that you separated from him until you were your divorce was granted in 1977, did you get some restraining orders, some personal protection orders against Mr. Williams? Yes. Did they ever keep him from contacting you? No. Your divorce was granted. Does July 7th, 1977 sound about right to you? That's correct. Had you ever seen the baby of Lisa Williams? Yes. Did you know Denise, now Denise Frazier, Denise Williams? Yes, I did. Okay. How did you know Denise? I'm not sure how I was thinking about it. I'm not sure how I met her, but um, I had talked to her often. I had warned her about Mr. Williams being such a violent man when I found out he was sick. I think I found out through the visitation of my children with him. And I had told her that, you know, she really didn't need to connect with him because he was a white man. And uh, so that's really how I got to know her. Elizabeth, it's been it's been 41 years. You and I had a chance to talk before this hearing, correct? Yeah, yes. And have you had a chance to review your prior interviews as far as a little bit of the dates and the times? Yes. Does it help you remember the timeline a little bit, um, given that it's been 41 years and we've had some medical issues? Yes, a little. Um, 
do you recall talking to Detective Iverson and actually Sergeant Canada back in 1983 and, and recalling that it was July of 1982 when you yes. last saw Elisa? Yes. Okay. When we were talking about Elisa, may I approach your honor? You may. This is People's Admitted Exhibit 1. Is this who we're talking about? Yes. Okay. That's the baby that you saw in July of 1982? Yes. Back in 1983, when your memory was fresh before your injuries, uh, do you recall telling them, you, you recalled it being July 9th that Mr. Williams actually brought the baby to your house? Yes. Okay. Now, before that, had you seen Olisa? Yes, I had seen her at the hospital. Tell me what hospital you'd seen her at. I think it was Universal. Um, do you remember about how much time, how was it a long time before he brought her to the house or a short time that you saw her in the house? I think it was a short time that I had seen her at the hospital when I visited his mother. Tell me about that. Why were you at the hospital visiting his mother? They said that his mother was very, very sick and that she may not live. I was very close to her. And so I went to see her many times. Probably four or five times. When you went to the hospital, how many times did you go to the hospital and ask that? I'm thinking probably about four or five times. How many times do you think you saw Elisa? At least four. Who was she with? How did she look? She looked fine to me. I mean, she was a pretty baby. She looked healthy to you? Healthy to me. Um, at that time, um, did you, when you first ran into Isaiah with the baby, did you know he had a new baby? No, I didn't. Did you ask him about having the baby? I think first I asked the sister, Geraldine, uh, who's deceased now, I asked her who his baby was. And she said, well, my brother say it, it's his child. And now that, did you ask now Isaiah who yes. the baby is? What yes, is he I did. He said it was his child. Um, at that time, did you have any concerns at all about why the baby was with Isaiah and not with Denise? Yes. Tell me about that. Uh, I asked, I remember asking him where was Denise. Uh, she was the mother of the child. Well, where was she? What did he tell you? He said he at that time told me that she was there in the Ann Arbor area. Uh, she wasn't at the hospital, but she, he, he was even waiting for her. He said he was keeping the baby for her? Yes. Okay. He didn't tell you that he took the baby from her, did he? No, he did not. So at that time, you had, had no reason to, to know that anything potentially criminal had happened? No. The third time I, I think I asked him, I was a little curious. Was that I just didn't think the mother would be, wouldn't be at the hospital without a child. And does this, this suspicion cause you to do anything? Uh, it caused me to call her mother, I think. I, I'm not sure how I met her mother, but I called over to the Frazier house and told them that I had seen Isaiah, hey, where was the niece? I wanted to see her. And so said, her mother said at that time, she did not know um, the niece was not there. Denise was not with her parents in no. And Isaiah had told you she was here yeah. in the area. Yes, he had. Did that cause you any concern? Um, I was a little concerned. After you've seen the baby several times at, at the hospital, on July 9th, how is it that Isaiah brings the baby? Tell us what you remember him. Um, actually, it was it was getting close to uh, my daughter Bernard's birthday on the 22nd of July. And uh, so we talked about that a little bit. The baby baby seemed a little dirty, which was not like Isaiah for a child or anyone else to be dirty around him. And so uh, I asked him, I had a, I had a motto uh, in mind when I asked him about, uh, could we clean up the baby and comb her, comb her hair? And uh, so, um, my my motive was to call Denise and tell her I had the baby. Or tell the parents after well, this was after they had found out about 
Denise had been beat up and she was in, in uh, Ohio and they and she had she had come there and she had come back to, to the Ann Arbor area. So, so you were trying to keep the baby there so you could get the baby back to Denise. Yes, I was. Okay. And you said it was getting close to Verna's birthday on the 22nd, correct? Yes, it was. Was Verna a teenager at the time? Around that age? I think she was uh, going to be 16. Now you said that you noticed she was dirty. Did you notice anything about her clothes? Uh, her clothes were not clean. So you and your girls clean her up. And did you actually take this picture of her? My daughter Kimberly did. Oh. And this was when she was at your house, yes. July 9th, 1982? Yes. And just for the record, your daughter, I was holding up exhibit one. Yes. Did you try to get Isaiah to leave the baby at the house with you? Yes, I did. Did he leave the baby? No, he would not. Did he say why he would not leave the baby with you? He didn't say. He just wouldn't do it. How long did he stay there approximately before he left with the baby? I don't remember how long he said uh, it was long enough for them to clean her up, put her clothes on, and comb her hair. Kimberly combed her hair and burned her dress. Um, did you see what kind of car Isaiah left? No, I don't. I don't remember. Right. No. Did he leave with the baby? Just him and the baby? The baby, yes. Did he have any any of the baby's belongings, a car seat, anything like that that you remember? I've never seen a car seat, no. Fast forward a couple of weeks. Um, you mentioned Verna's birthday, July 22nd, correct? Yes. Um, do you remember telling Sergeant Canada you went to Detroit with Isaiah uh, around her birthday, July 22nd? Yes, the 21st. The 21st, the day before. Yes. Do you remember why you and Isaiah went to Detroit? I'm not sure why we went to Detroit, but um, he uh, wanted to... Why well, we initially went the 21st, the 22nd, I think he wanted to uh, catch a bus. Tell me about that. You said he wanted to catch a bus. Where was where was he catching a bus to? From Detroit. Okay, to where? To Alabama. Did he ask you to take him to the bus station? He did. Okay. And did he tell you why he was going to Alabama? He said to see some relatives. I had known him for many years and didn't, I mean, I knew they probably maybe had some relatives. But I had never met any relatives from Alabama. All of his brothers and sisters, except for him and his younger sister, who were born in Alabama. But I had never met him. So you didn't meet anybody that he was allegedly going to see, correct? No, no, I didn't. He didn't tell you he was who he was going to see. No, he did. He, did you have any luggage with him? No, I don't remember. Did he have Olisa with him? No, he did not. Do you remember telling the police that that Isaiah told you he had to get out of town? Yeah, but so, yeah, he did tell me that a couple of times. And again, was this around uh, around Verna's birthday at the end yes. of July? And at that time, was it your understanding that Isaiah lived in in the state of Ohio? Yes. Okay. But he was going to Alabama. Yes. Did he actually witness him get on the bus and leave? Yes, I did. Did you ask him at that time where Elisa was or who had Elisa when he left at the end of July to go to Alabama? I did ask where the baby was. He said the baby was with uh, her mother. That's Denise? Yes. Have you come to since learn that that, that is not accurate? That's true, yeah. At some point, does Isaiah come back to Michigan? He came back for his mother's funeral. She did die and came back for her funeral. Was that in September of 1982, if you recall? He did not come back or you did not see him before then? No. Did you have any conversations with him by phone between that time period of end of July and September? I may have had a conversation with him on the phone, but I, I don't remember. Let me ask this. Um, in the time period that Isaiah is gone, did you have conversations with Denise at that point? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you learn, learn that Omisa was missing? Yes, I did. 
When Isaiah came back, did you ever ask Isaiah where Elisa was? Many times. Yes. Tell me about one of the first times you remember asking him and what he told you. Um, he took, I, I, I don't remember exactly when it was. I, he, he told me that, but he, he said something about she's across the water or something. Did you know what that meant? I did. No. And he didn't explain it. So did you continue to ask him <laughs> over and over what happened to Lisa? Each time and every time I saw I said, I asked him. Tell me about other things he would tell you. Um, I remember one time he told me he had met someone um, when he was in prison, uh, when he was in jail or something. Uh, he had met a, a couple, a, a man, and a, this the parents of this young man wanted a, a little girl. And so he said, he had told me about that. Too. Did he ever admit to you that he, he had told Denise that he killed Elisa? I don't think he said that right then, but he said that later on. Remember how much later on he told you that? I think he told me that when I learned about um, her at the at the motel in uh, in Inkster or some area that she had to jump out the window. I asked I asked about that then, uh, and that's when he told me that. That he had told the niece that he yes. Had told yes. Did you ever inquire further about him killing her, whether he did that or not? And he said, well, I was just making a joke of it. I really didn't do that. You know, I wouldn't do anything like that. But at that point, had you seen Elisa? Since? No. The house that you were living in when you last saw Elisa in July, early July, where was that house? On Oakville Watts in Carlton. What county is that? Uh, Wayne County. Let's talk about his mother's funeral. Oh, actually, before his mother's funeral. In August or September of 1982, was there a time that you found something in your garage yes, that didn't belong there? Tell me about that. Um, I found a new shovel in my garage. And so I asked my children about it. My boys are very young at the time. Um, my girls, I asked them about the shovel. And then their cousins come over with the shovel. And they said no. So I called the police department and told them that the shovel had to be in my drive, in my garage. And I'm not sure how what happened, but at that time Car Carmen Harlan was working for uh down for and she came out and did a story about the shovel and I bet I told I walked on to you. Is this the same month that Isaiah brought the baby to? Yes. Yes, it was. Did Isaiah have access to this house? Did he have no, he didn't have a video. Okay. But he could come on the property, correct? He could come on the property. And so you saw this shovel. Yeah. What prompts you or what concerns you enough to call the police? Because I know I didn't buy it and uh, it was in my garage. At that point, did you know who was in this house? Yes, I did. Did you also tell the police that, that Mr. Williams was an avid hunter as well? Yes, I did. Did you just close and tell them some of the places that he was known to go hunting uh, in Michigan, Carlton, and Milan area in Northern Ohio? Well, he would go hunting a lot of different, different places in the area because he, would hunt, he, he, he hunted a lot. Tell me about the funeral, September 2nd, 1982, when Isaiah returned back from Alabama. Does he have the baby? No. Do you see Denise show up? Yes. Does Denise have the baby? No. Is anybody asking Isaiah at that point where the baby is? I'm not sure what anybody else is doing, but I, I had asked him about it. And is it those same stories that you told us? Same story. Did Mr. Williams ever tell you a story about being in Island Park in Ann Arbor? The baby security. I think I heard that from someone else, and then I asked him about that pinch story. Uh, he said that 
I, I'm not sure who, whose car he was driving, but he said the baby was with him in the car, and uh, and he fell asleep. He had been smoking marijuana, and he fell asleep. And the baby was in the car seat at the time he went to sleep. When he woke up, the car seat was not there. The baby was not there. There was a box of diapers that was not there. And uh, he wore kind of expensive boots that were dingo, called dingo boots. They were not there. The boots, the baby, and all, all the things were gone, according to Mr. Williams. Yes, he, was at, he said it was at, at Island Park. I bought some University Hospital. In Island Park, um, across from the University Hospital, that's in the city of Ann Arbor, correct? Yes. Mr. Williams, did, if you know, did you report this to the police that at the not, time that the baby was taken? Not as I know of. Okay. Um, this story about um, baby being taken from Island Park, did he tell you this after he told you about giving the baby away or being the baby being across the water? Was this before or after he told you those stories? After. Let's let's fast forward to February. Yes. Tell me what happened. Um, it came by my job and we were talking about then um, and uh, she was uh, she was graduating from school. I think it was. Uh, we were talking about different things, and so he wanted to. He said he had a he wanted to drive my car. In fact, he was driving my car. I think. Uh, and so he picked me up at work. We began to go down um, Devonshire, Vinewood area, over there. I worked there. I had done some domestic work there. So I kind of knew that area a little bit. And he got kind of got faster and faster and faster. And um, at that time, I had a, a boot, I think Fairmont or something like that. Um, I just figured that, he, first of all, when I got in the car, he asked me for $50. I told him I didn't have $50. I was taking care of his children. How did, how did he react to you not kidding? He got upset. He started to slap me and uh, hit me. I decided that he was, and he got faster and faster in the car. I decided that um, I needed to jump out of this car. But I was like, you know, I, 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 I'm a woman of faith, and I believe in prayer. <laughs> and I prayed, and I said, God, please let this door open. Let me get out of this car. Uh, because I want, I wanted my kids, my girls especially, to know that I at least tried to do what was right and what um, that I felt I needed to jump out of the car. So I opened the door. Um, the door was stuck a little before that because Kim and Vernon, I think Kim Vernon started driving, and she would, they were arguing over who could drive the car out of the drive out of the garage. And uh, so that's the reason why I prayed and asked God to please open the left door. I opened the door and jumped out of the car. I dri he was driving the car still. It was still moving when you jumped out? Yes, it was. What happened now? Um, I ran to the closest house I could see. And I was going to the back of the, back of the house. At the time, there was... Um, a lot of lumber in the driveway. I wasn't sure at the time about what would happen, what happened, but they were building a garage and something. Um, so I ran to the to the door, um, the back door. It was a big kind of mansion type house. And uh, so it just so happened that there was a pilot that lived in the house. He was there. He um, was only there because his wife was having a baby. Um, so I, when I was knocking on the door, he didn't hear me because he was on like the second or third floor of this house. So I knocked on the door 
and Isaiah um, got in, he was still in the car. He ran the car into the other two or three cars that was parked in the driveway. He crashed it. He crashed car. into it. So that was made the attention of the man knows of the house. And so he looked out and saw what had happened. He can return, uh, told the court that he called the police. And when he came to the back door, I was there. Isaiah had got to the back of the door and uh, picked up a board and hit me in my head. So one of those boards you were talking about, the lumber yes. building, the addition over there? Yes, it was seven, seven feet long. Seven feet long. He picked up a seven foot board. Where did he hit you with that board? Well, he first started with my head. I covered my head with my hands like this. And he began to hit me with my hands. I have started to on both of my arms with that. Um, and my hands just went down because it, 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 I heard the crack when it, when it cracked. By that time, the gentleman from the house uh, came outside. And he, did he stop him? He asked, he said, please stop. He said, uh, she's leaving. Uh, and Isaiah said to him to go in the house and get some towels. The man in the house came with the towels. He thought he would, you know, of course, try to take care of me himself. Isaiah wanted to do that himself. So did Isaiah start putting the towels on you? He started putting the towels on you. Did the police come to that scene, to that house? It was one, one officer at the time. Did they arrest Mr. Lewis? Um, they did. And did Mr. was Mr. Williams charged with assaulting you? Yes, he was. Did he go to prison? Yes, he did. We talked a little bit before that this assault has caused some memory issues for you. Yes. Tell yes. me how it affected you. Um, so affected me more these years. Uh, I was told by my neurologist, please do not call. You have a, a lot of concussions already. Uh, and those concussions came from my skin. From the assault? From the assault. And that's one of the reasons why the doctor said I had a head stroke. Too. Causing from the injuries from your Causing assault? Causing injuries, yes. When Mr. Williams got out of prison, did you continue getting a personal protection order to, to keep him away from you? Yes, I did. Um, it's not the one I showed you. It's just in that case. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Ms. Reese, is this? This is People's Proposed 56. Does this look like the paperwork that, that you had regarding one of your personal protection orders in 1997 and 1990? Looks like 1997. Got it. Yes. Does that accurately reflect the, the paperwork that you had to fill out and that came from the court at the time? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'd ask that the uh, People's 56, which is seven pages uh, in length, be admitted into evidence. Any objection? What do you? No objection for exam purposes only, Your Honor. Exhibit 56 is admitted. Ms. Reese, did the defendant ever claim to you that he had a close head injury at any point that caused him to not remember who he was or who he were? He didn't say that to me. I get I got my information after that from I didn't communicate with him. I got that from my daughter. He's never directly sent out to you. Let me ask that. Um, did one of your sons pass away? Yes. Is that Deshaun? Yes. Did you call him Sean? Yes. Okay. Um, was there an, a state hearing regarding some some money for, for Deshaun in 2004 or 2005 time frame? Yes, it was. Did Mr. Williams show up at that hearing? Yes, he did. Did he testify at that hearing? Yes, he did. Did he testify as to being Deshaun's father, being entitled to some of that money? He did. You contacted in around 2008 or 2009 to give Isaiah some money. Yes. Okay. Um, were some threats made to you from Isaiah about what would happen if you didn't give him that money? 
Yes. What did Isaiah tell you? Uh, it was a threat about he was in the building where my grandmother lived at the time. What was your grandmother's name? Oh, uh, my Robinson. Okay. He was in that building. What did he tell you? Uh, well, he told me that she was baking in rolls, and I knew she was a baker, and she lived, and he knew exactly where she was at the end of the hall. That's where she lived. Did he tell you something that would happen to her regarding what would happen to her? Is that um, on the phone, you remember what happened? Um, it, it, something could happen to your grandma. And you knew I was very close to her. Um, at that time, did you have a, a granddaughter, Simone? Yes. Okay. And he made a statement to you about Simone is very much like that baby. Do you remember telling him, please? Okay, what is she leading? Sustain. Let you rephrase. Let me ask this. Um, did you give some information to the police that uh, in 1983, 2011, 2014, and 2015, regarding all of your knowledge on this case? Yes. Okay. Um, did you give the police some information at that time about some threats that, that Mr. Wilson made to you regarding his family? Yes. You've already talked about uh, some threats that right. you've done Fred, correct? Yes. Did he make some threats regarding Simone? I believe so. It was a comparison to from Simone to the baby go through this When you say comparison, tell me what you mean by comparison. Um I don't remember him saying um directly that it about the baby, but it was about comparing one to the other. Okay. You don't remember his exact words? No, I don't. Was this around the same time that he'd been asking you what that's going on that we've been talking about? Yes. Do you have any current relationship with the defendant, Isaiah? No. Have you always cooperated with the police in giving your statements? Yes, I try my best to. Have you always been truthful and upfront with the police? At that particular time, I was. Yes. Ms. Reese, do you recall approximately how old Kimberly was when she got these injuries, broken leg and broken arm? About two and a half. About two and a half years old? Yes. I don't have any further questions. Thank you, Ms. Reese. Okay, hold on. Cross examination. Yeah, it's got to be L. Yeah, to make sure it's green. Good afternoon. Uh, you said Mr. Williams is an avid hunter. So did he move around to hunt? Like, did he go to different locations to hunt? Yes. Okay. So it wasn't unusual for him to be out of town or on his way out of town? In the area, but not out of state. Right. But it wasn't unusual for him to travel, correct? Okay. And you said that he did have family from Alabama? Yes, Okay. And at the time that he was leaving, his mother was sick, correct? She died like two months later, right? Okay. He was close to his mom, right? Yes. Okay. And when you saw 
Olisa at your house in July, you said that she was dirty and she had on dirty clothes. Um, when you guys washed her up and changed her clothes, you didn't notice any bruises or scars or anything, correct? No. Didn't notice any signs of abuse, did you? No. Okay. And when you initially started hearing rumors about um, Elisa being missing and, uh, and Mr. Williams' possible involvement, you initially didn't think anything of it, correct? What you asked me, like, worst heard about? When you first started hearing rumors and speculation about Elisa being missing and about Mr. Williams possibly having something to do with that, initially, you did not think that he had harmed the child, correct? Initially. Okay. In fact, initially, you thought he was with his sister, Geraldine, or someone like no, him or not the baby. I thought the baby was with her mother. Okay. But again, you didn't think anything was wrong with the baby, especially not based on your last observations or interactions with the baby and Mr. Williams, correct? Let me phrase it this way. When you when you saw Mr. Williams with the baby, did the baby seem to be scared of Mr. Williams? No. Okay. Did the baby seem to want to stay with you guys and not go with Mr. Williams when Mr. Williams was leaving? Judge, I'm going to object to how she's going to be able to answer what infant was seeming to want to do at the time. I think that's uh, Okay, I'll, I'll rephrase. Me. When Mr. Williams was getting ready to leave with the baby, did the baby seem to cling to you guys or did the baby seem to go with Mr. Williams with no problem? When was Mr. Williams with no Okay. And Although Mr. Williams was coming around during this time, you were still somewhat afraid of him, correct? Because of his past? So it's fair to say you were trying to get him out of your house as quickly as possible, yes? Yeah, yes. Okay, so you weren't trying to walk him out to check out the car or see what was in the car in terms of belongings for him or the baby, correct? No. So when he walked out the door, you just let him go with the baby, right? Yeah. Okay, no further questions. Right. Ms. Reese, you said, I noticed when you were asked that last question, you said him. Yes, I'm trying to get him out. Yes. You were trying to keep Olisa in, correct? Yes. Why were you trying to keep Olisa in the house without Mr. Williams there? Because I wanted to know by her mother that I, I had her with me. You wanted her to be with her mother. Okay. And you were asked about Rumors of Elisa being missing. As far as rumors, you've never seen Elisa again in the last 40 years, have you? No. Okay. And you said you initially did not think he harmed her. What do you think now? I think he did. And you were asked about um, him hunting, and you said he hunted in state, correct? As far as I know, I'm not state. When you took him to Alabama, he didn't tell you he was going there to, to hunt, correct? No, he did not. Okay. And you talked about him being close to his mom. You you were close to her as well, correct? Yes. And when Isaiah left to go to Alabama at the end of July, was she still sick? Yes. She was dying, correct? Yes. And Isaiah went to Alabama, correct? Yes. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Good for you. You don't like Mr. Williams, do you? Not that I don't like Mr. Williams. I don't like what he does and what he's done to me. Okay. You don't hold him in high esteem, correct? No, I do not. So if someone told you something negative about him, it's fair to say you would believe it versus not believe it, yes? No, I wouldn't. Okay. Does Mr. Williams strike you as the type of person who stays to deal with difficult stuff, or does he tend to run when things get a little difficult for him? Objection as to speculation. Sustained. Okay. You were married to Mr. Williams for over 10 years, correct? Yes. You had four children with him? Yes. You, even after you guys uh, separated, you still saw him from time to time, even if the interaction was mainly around the children, correct? Yes. During the time that you knew him, is it fair to say that he's the type of person who, when things get difficult, he tends to run if he can't argue or fight his way out of it? Is that fair to say? 
Yes. Okay. He doesn't handle stress very well, correct? Not at all. And he was stressed about his mother dying, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. No further questions. I don't have any questions. Okay. Ms. Reese, thank you very much. Here. 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 Thank you.